where I live, like in the Midwest. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, I'm going to put you on hold for a minute. I got to do some of these little breaks for the radio stations. Yes, we're on 17 stations. Not like we were, but hopefully that'll keep growing. Uh, We'll be back in about three and a half minutes. So everybody just enjoy the music. Listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network from our compound to you worldwide with your host, Gary Anderson. Hey, that is me. A big shout out to the truckers. I get a lot of fan mail from truckers that said they like listening to the replays while they're doing long hauls. Uh, to Tim O'Brien, uh, that uh, is a trucker, I just want to do a big shout out to you, especially. I like some of the stories that you tell me that happen while you're out traveling on the road late at night maybe we need to get you on the show one of these nights and you can talk about that and all the people out of the uk uh uh, argentina uh you name it uh ireland we've been getting people from ireland and naturally australia is a big listenership on night dreams talk radio after dark i got my co-host on for the first hour uh james chrisbaum hey james how you doing did you have a good break oh it was fabulous thank you for that Two minutes. I needed it. I know you did too. Oh, you come. Well, I tell you what, I did something I <laughs> haven't done, and actually, it got I got to break it. I normally told you like drink tea, but my wife the other day gave me a bottle of Coke, and I tell you, it tasted oh. 
and and you no. know what? By the t- it took me a day to drink it, but then all of a sudden, by the time I finished that first bottle, I got the craving back for Coke. I got to quit. I got to go back to tea. Something healthy. Yeah, <laughs> you were hooked. You he relapsed back on Coke again. Dag on it. Bad oh, stuff. Man. Bad stuff. You know, when I was yeah. in the army, one of the cooks showed me something. He took a uh, a big roast or whatever it was, stuck it in a great big you know pan, and yep. and filled it up with Coca Cola. And the next morning, we came back and looked at it. It was pretty much all gooey slime. I'll tell you what. You want to hear something even more? I, I, I apologize than that. to the Coca Cola. It, it, that <laughs> you know, I, I'm not knocking it. Okay, we're not experts. That's and I didn't do it. It was the cook that did it. So I'm just telling you what I saw. Okay, I wanted to clear that up. Well, Coca Cola has some uh, really good cleaning aspects. Like you can clean grease off your bench with it. It's just I don't know. It's good. It's good to drink too. But I use it, it for taking. I, ta- I use it for taking rust off when I had my motorcycle before it got totaled. Right, and I'll tell you something else. Go to the store next time you buy a pork roast or something, put it in a pan like you said, and cover it with coke and let it sit for a day. And I'm not even going to say nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> That'll put you on a diet, wouldn't you believe? But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just really concerned about all this money that we're we're spending. You know, when I'm really worried, something is happening with our planet. And they're not telling oh, yeah. us. I think they know something that's going on because, I, you know, a while back they were talking about their, the, the Earth was in a little bit of a wobble. And, you know, then they said it was a little bit off its axis a little bit. I'm just wondering if, you know, they know something has happened. You know that TV show was on years ago, Space 1999, where the moon got blown out of the uh, orbit of the Earth? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's still on once in a while, I think. I, I watched like 30 shows of it here this past weekend. They had a man, uh, marathon on it. But I, it, what con- concerns me is, is something like that going on? Because the, 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 97 degrees in Alaska? Come on. We've never had temperatures like that in Alaska. 97. And Antarctica, they reported temperatures close to 97 in a couple areas, too, during this summer crazy wow. something is and you, going on yeah and you know another there's like a chain reaction with this stuff and what happens when, when places like that or even here where i live if you have a soft winter where you don't have a lot of freezes and stuff the insect population is doubled so now when that happens like with mosquitoes you got a lot more diseases and a lot more newborn diseases that will come out and that just adds to the chaos of, of everything that's going on Oh, it does, and that's the scary part. But, you know, not just that, Antarctica melting. You know, who knows yeah. what's buried in that, uh, underneath that permafrost, what bacteria is that humans would not be able to handle. You know, we're, y- y- could you imagine some type of disease that could all of a sudden circulate and start wiping out mankind? Oh, I guarantee you there's bacteria in there that's probably, you know, so many thousand years old that our modern bodies and immune systems probably wouldn't even know how to even begin to handle it you know i see a show not too long ago where they were digging way down in that stuff and, they, and there there is a such thing called ice worms that that is all they eat in the ice is bacteria so that tells you it's there yeah that's scary though because you're right our immune system couldn't handle anything you know like typhoid if that came back look how many people would die because we, you know, and our antibiotics, let's face it, we don't, uh, unless they come out with some new type of uh, antibiotics, right now, they can't, if you get the super bug in where your body starts rotting on you, they can't even stop it. No, because um, genetically, these diseases and stuff have learned to build up a tolerance over it. They've learned to adapt and overcome this, our medicine. So it's a give and take, and we're fighting a losing battle right now. Oh, yeah, I guess if you have a look at, you know, the farm uh, farmers, you know, they started using it on chickens and they used it on all their animals like pigs and and cattle, you know, loading them with antibiotics because they don't want sick animals because it costs them money. So now you're eating that steak and you're getting all kinds of hormones and all kinds of antibiotics in that steak. And then your body starts becoming immune to it. So if something happens. You go to the doctor, and even if he gives you antibiotics, it isn't going to do anything because your whole body has been crammed with antibiotics for many years now. Exactly. And, you know, there's been a theory out there that some aliens have um, 
bestowed upon us some of these diseases and stuff to try to uh, depopulate some of us. That was one of the theories I was reading about not too long ago. What do you think about that? Well, how many times have you heard me talk about aliens? My theory on them, okay? I, you know, I do believe we're being visited. If you don't believe we're being visited and this planet hasn't been visited, then you're living in a box or you're living in your <laughs> closet with a door closed and no light on because you're, you're really, I hate to say it, you're, you're naive as a person could be because there is such thing as aliens. There's such thing as UFOs. And no, they're not demons. I do believe that with all these other solar systems they keep finding in galaxies, there's life out there. And we just can't comprehend what it is, okay? Because we've been brainwashed by TV shows like Star Trek and all these other shows, you know, through the years of that what aliens are, okay? That's only what we can see, what they look like. Who knows? We might not even see them because they could be in a different dimension. They could be walking among us and we wouldn't even see it. Or they could be so much better looking at us or better looking at me, which I find that very hard. But Or they could be so hideous that we couldn't even look at them without having a heart attack or they can make themselves look like ordinary people and we wouldn't even know and you know one of the theories was that spanish flu that came around the turn of the century um had links to maybe some people thought maybe the aliens put it on us or whatever but uh, it's some scary thoughts and those good ones and bad ones just like people and animals there's good ones bad ones mad ones whatever well, like I have told my theory on it, I think at the beginning of mankind, okay, and it's a fact, Earth has been reborn several times. We've been rebooted. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't believe we're on the metrics. I don't believe we're a computer chip running somewhere, because if we are, I, I feel sorry for whoever's running that computer. But I, I, I really <laughs> think, okay, that our first coming as a human was not brought on by... Well, like what we think, I think eventually because our planet was so rich in resources like gold and silver and 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 uh, tungsten and other weird uh, materials, it, it's a common fact that two things that are worth a lot is gold and silver. Now, not because of jewelry, because it's used in electronics, because it can pass current, you know, a lot easier with, with less resistance. Now. Can you imagine uh, aliens from some other solar system, another galaxy away, comes in, to Earth, right? And there's virtually no life on Earth. And they, they're scanning the planet and they find all these deposits of gold and silver. Okay, so they start mining our planet. So they bring in, well, I can say it, a workforce. Maybe some humanoids from some other planet they conquered. And now they're working in the caves, bringing out gold, bringing out silver, doing whatever slaves do. They would kind of worship, wouldn't they, those creatures as gods? Oh, of course they would. And, you know, it's funny you mention that because I think Zachariah Stitchin touched on a lot of that. And if you really think about it, why would civilizations that's running around a jungle with pretty much a loincloth and a spear uh, worship and cherish gold and silver? I mean, what what would be their purpose for it? Maybe if they seen aliens come down because they needed it, and they liked it, and they thought, well, let's keep cherishing it. Maybe they'll come back because they looked at them, like you said, as gods. Well, that could be one of it. But then they realized when they were mining the gold, right, for our planets, you know, and, and diamonds and maybe other uh, minerals, right? They knew that it was worth something because, you know, they're masters. That's what they had to do. They lived or they died mining this stuff. So they, they, they realized this gold is worth a lot of money. Otherwise, wouldn't they be worshiping and stockpiling uh, like the Incas and all these other ones? Wouldn't they be uh, brass or, or lead or anything else would be just as popular? But no, it was gold and silver, mainly gold. Right, and you would think, especially in like in Egypt in the desert, or even in South America, that water would be the main uh, currency. I would think it, geez, over gold. Well, that's, especially back then. Let's see, that's my feeling. Okay, so I think what that's, I think that's how mankind found kind of religion because before that, when it started growing, I don't know how the population of humanoids kept evolving, but that I'm not that type of person to tell you that. But I think they went away from the gods of the mountain, gods of the fire god, the uh, go, uh, god of whatever. 
into believing in 